Today's subject is Kylian Mbappe, where he might end up. We all know where he's most likely to end up, but that doesn't mean that we can't do interesting things on this channel, which might lead to someone thinking something different or just having some fun. Why did we start this vlog in the first place? Seriously, if it wasn't to have fun. Some of this is going to be based on my opinions of what Kylian Mbappe will bring to the Premier League, but some of this is going to be based on brilliant voice notes from actual Arsenal people. First up, Remedy. Warning, this guy's actually intelligent, so you, you might actually disagree with some of the stuff he says. I'm just saying. Okay, so it's a weird one. I would love Mbappe at Arsenal. I think we are at a point in our... I think in our journey where we need that superstar. So first of all, yeah, this mention of a superstar is something that everyone I spoke to mentioned. We'll come back to it because I think it's an interesting point. What he's really saying is, and I know it's a weird thing to say, but no to Kylian Mbappe. And you can't really fault his reasoning. I mean, you can make an amazing argument for Kylian Mbappe, but it says something about Arsenal right now that they're sort of going, hmm, do we really, do we, should we really? But... I'm not sure, man. There's something that's off about Mbappe that, and one of his qualities that don't really run through the squad. I think the squad right now, everyone is feeling to become that quote-unquote star player. And I think with Mbappe joining us, we don't really have egos in our team. And Mbappe joining us will add that ego. So for us, in us developing that ego, maybe he accelerates that process of us being a big team. But... I don't know, I'm 50-50, more so towards not wanting him, only because I'm absolutely sure he's not joining us. Who wouldn't love Mbappe at their team, right? Like, of course, you'd love a superstar on your roster, but also you'd love a superstar in your league. So if you're not an Arsenal fan, you're just thinking win-win here, right? We get to watch Kylian Mbappe week in, week out. Which is why these aren't issues, because guess what? He's only picking one team and he's crafting himself just for them. But that's not the point of the video, so... Bro, thank you for your voice note, but also just thank you for the videos that you make. Seriously, you probably do already know who he is, but that guy's amazing. Go watch his stuff. It's in the link. Coming into bat now is Alexander Moneypenny, or otherwise known as TDK, uh, The Different Knock. Amazing podcast, amazing channel. Warning, this guy's intelligent. You might not like it. Real thank you to him, by the way, because originally he was sick. He went and ate a curry just to record this. So, yeah, I appreciate it. Thanks. I think with Mbappe, it always comes back to this. The player is... Un unquestionable, undoubted. He is one of the best talents in the world, if not the best. The question is always the business side of things and the deal side of things. And I just don't know if it will fit. I have too many questions. I have too, you know, will he drop his wage demands? With Mbappe, there comes an entire team, an entire country's hopes. Is that are Arsenal resilient enough to deal with that? Is Arteta um, experienced enough to deal with that? Is there? Um, you know, space in this project right now for that sort of uh, business really to come in and almost become Mbappe's Arsenal. Is that healthy for us? I don't know. But from Mbappe's perspective, if I'm advising him, I'd say, look, you could earn money anywhere, drop your wages, focus on the football, and then go to Saudi in five years' time and, and do whatever you want. But drop your wages, focus on the football, and go to the best footballing project. And then it's a toss-up between Madrid and Arsenal. Um, I'm an Arsenal fan, so I'd say Arsenal, but I'm sure a lot of people would say Madrid. Okay, so a couple of points to put in here which I think are really worth talking about. First of all, he talks about Mbappe's Arsenal. I think the difference between Real Madrid and Arsenal is obviously quite evident. It's, it's a vast uh, chasm between what the two clubs aspire to be, but also what the two clubs are, right? So to want to be a player for Real Madrid and to want to be a player for Arsenal is a different wish like it's a different dream to have because what you're aspiring to are two different ideals but if Mbappe was to pick a team in the Premier League it would show that his ideals are probably different to some of what we've already thought or assumed they are right like we assume that a lot of it is money stardom fame the kind of football history which I think Arsenal are but in a different way to the way that Real Madrid are but if he was to come to Arsenal sure it would be a Kylian Mbappe team but for me it would be a continuation of a lineage, right? It would be Thierry Henry, Robert Perez, Patrick Vieira, that generation of players, Manuel Petit. Him continuing that lineage, it would evoke something of the Wenger era. It would evoke something of the French connection. There would be that feeling again around Arsenal. Maybe we don't currently have with Arsenal, right? Which is 
fine. Like, you know, you don't always have to have that. That's for eras. But also, would it be good to do that? Is that a good thing for Arteta to evoke? They have Arsene Wenger quotes up on the wall at Arsenal because he is an Arsenal great. And Arteta is clearly cognizant of the impact that Arsene Wenger had on this team. But when you have someone that looks like Mbappe, that has the similarity in terms of build, in terms of probably demeanor, even, dare I say, arrogance about him, I think what it shows is not that they need it at Arsenal, but that there would be an appetite for this kind of thing. Arsenal is a pull. People forget that with the French. The star pull that possibly convinces other people to just look in at Arsenal and just say, yeah, maybe it's worth me going there for a little while, even if it is for the two years. Maybe I will love the city. Maybe I love the people. Maybe I love the fans. Maybe I love Arteta. Maybe I love the setup. And maybe in the time that players are there, your club takes a little bump. Alexander said some other stuff on messages afterwards, which is interesting, but I want to get to those after this. Just the fact that I get messages from some of these people blows my mind. Blows my mind. But it's what I wanted to do with a vlog, where we get that little bit of personal access that we think, you know, can be a bit insightful. It is such a hazy, beautiful evening here, by the way. Look at that. Look at that. Look at that. It is London. You're beautiful. Okay, the final one here, guys, is Alexis Guerreros. He is a huge Arsenal fan. He's based in New York. He's just a cool guy. And he's on CBS. He's on CBS, the same as Thierry Henry, the same as Jamie Carragher, the same as Kate Abdo. Over here, gray skies. Immediately above, the moon. Over here, haze. It's like three different, this is London, guys. If you dress to come here, just wear a hoodie. Just wear a hoodie, it's what we all do. Seriously. Okay. Would would I want or would I have Kylian Mbappe on Arsenal? If there's any Arsenal fan that says no, I want to talk to him. Uh, the only part, the only one who can say no is Mikel Arteta or Adu. That's it. Uh, yeah, he would instantly be an upgrade over Gabriel Jesus, which is where he would start. Uh, he would be able to float left. He would be able to get uh, Martinelli to move a little bit central, which we've seen work really well, in particular in that Liverpool match where he was able to run behind the lines. You get Mbappe back on the left, which is absolutely incredible, but obviously he would start in the in the nine position, float all around. It's exactly what Mikel Arteta wants, which is more of a false nine, a nine that is not necessarily responsible for all the goals, not necessarily just looking to put on goal, but now you have one who is wildly clinical in front of goal, uh, would obviously finish a lot more chances than Gabriel Jesus does, and it's a good opportunity for giving Mbappe a little bit of a break, giving Saka a bit of a break, giving Martinelli a bit of a break to be able to put all four of them, uh, have them at least a part of a rotation. I mean, so much more dynamic, so much more options up front. I, to me, it's just a win-win. The only negative, maybe you could say the media circus that comes with it is a bit of a negative, but I think that's a positive overall, even if it's a little bit negative sometimes, because, uh, hey, bad publicity is still publicity, baby. I think the only negative is the wage. The wage would be a lot. And how loyal is he to Arsenal, which I think is important, because if what Mikel Arteta said about a five-year plan is true, then we've got, what, two years left? before that comes to full fruition and if he wants to use arsenal as an opportunity to springboard to another major club like uh ral or something of that nature then that's just going to create the type of media circus that i don't think is that great which is will, will he leave is he leaving what's going on at the end of uh you know the season before his uh before he has a year left on his contract so as far as i'm concerned that's a a hundred percent yes for me there's zero reason to suggest otherwise and if anybody says they wouldn't want him or have him, they got to not be an Arsenal fan, bro. I mean, that's Mbappe. You know, you, you see why obviously that guy's on TV in America and would probably make it on TV in the, England if he slightly adjusted his accent. Uh, the point being that he's basically saying it's Mbappe. So, of course, you've got to acknowledge the greatness. But do you want the wage structure that gets broken at your club in that time? Do you want the possible circus that it brings, the drama, the, when he does want to leave, is he really going to be all that loyal to you? Or are you such a big entity that all of that is like, yeah, this is just business. We understand it. We get it. But we want you at our club for this time because you are potentially a Maradona or a Pele or a Messi or a Ronaldo of their generation. Here's the thing. To see you in that kit 
reminding us of Henri, but being your, te- you know, you're not got 14 on the back, you've got 10. Are you a Bergkamp? Are you an Henri? Who do you compare with? Who could you be? Are we even evoking anyone? You're like a perfect mix of all the French guys we've previously had. If as a club, you can almost sustain that hit and go, we just want a piece of history here with us. That's amazing. Do you care about people who are going to stick around potentially at your club to be a club captain or a club legend for 10 years more than you do for the two? Or do those two years make their 10 years so special and are they playing alongside and elevated by having that player around that you take a risk or what seems like a sacrifice? Does that make sense? That would be Haaland versus Mbappe. That would be a generational rivalry that we just wouldn't have seen before. By the way, thank you to Alexis. He did that from the set of his morning show in America. He's just the guy. He's the best company. He's on the Cooligans as well. And he's cool. Wiggins. I think he's named after the cool Bradley Wiggins. I'd, that's what he told me when I had coffee with him. Just kept going on about cycling. I'd. And yes, there is that Thierry Henry element here where you can see the socks and the kit. And once you see that combination of build and kit, this, the boots, the adverts that will come out of it. <laughs> you just, do you know what I mean? Mbappe is kind of an entity unto himself. He's kind of a LeBron James, Messi type level figure here. These guys are, they run a lot of their own shows. They are the people who are at the center of their own universe, similar to everyone else, but they're the center of our universe more than say, just a, you know, a normal squad player would be. So you understand why it would be harder to manage them. PSG have barely done it and they, well, they didn't really, did they? They didn't get the goals that they wanted. They didn't get the, you know, the Champions League returns, the marketing ideas that you would imagine they would have sold themselves on. So I don't think you can judge Arteta purely on this. And clearly he is capable of managing big characters. He's worked with some of the biggest managerial characters in Pep Guardiola, etc., etc. So, and then this whole media circus thing, right? I think if you just accept you're gonna get two years, not hope for more, that's your best bet of coming away with some form of self-respect here. and. Actually, I think that's that bad. I think that's pretty good. Two years in which you have a peak chance of winning something because you've got an elite striker who's competing. Yeah, I'll tell you that. Would he play on the left? Sometimes. Like Alexis said, would he play in the center? Very often. But also, does he love to drop deep like he does for PSG? Would he ever wander over to the right and allow Saka a slightly different role? Could you double up with Saka and Mbappe? One going on the outside, one going on the inside. Suddenly when you have Mbappe and the gravity of a player like that, what happens to all these other players? But then Alexander said something really interesting. Let me find it, for real. Avert, Avert. Who would you drop? Martinelli? And he said, it would take some working out, but initially, Jesus but we'd probably see the best of Havertz if he came. I think Havertz could be the backboard CF in certain moments in a game. Think a really good Crouchy and Defoe. And he wasn't wrong. The combinations that someone like Mbappe brings you and the gravity of a player like that just pulling players towards him creates space naturally. His finishing ability is elite. The wages he commands, of course, are elite. But tactically, if Arteta could pull that off... Wow. Wow. But it brings me to two conclusions. First of all, Arsenal don't necessarily need Mbappe, but to get someone in that area who can add an extra flavor to their attack for much less than Mbappe is the next move for Arsenal. I'd love to know who you think fits in there. So let me know in the comments below. And then secondly, the task of the Real Madrid manager to fit all of these talents in is monumental. But wow, that feels like something that Carlo Ancelotti could do which is what Jamie said. While you're here, he goes to Real Madrid probably. And? And it's a little bit more complex. It'll work because he's really good. Yeah. But it adds a little bit of complexity because they found a really nice balance at the moment. Yeah. With Vinicius owning the left-hand side, Bellingham owning that like eight to 10 false nine thing, and Rodrigo loving life. When you add one more in who really, really doesn't want to play up front, he had to go with the PSG manager last year because he wanted to play off a pivot, which was Giroud. If you ask him at Real Madrid to now play up front, he's going to be unhappy. But at the same time, the left is owned by Vinicius. So there's a little bit of a job. Ancelotti will fix it. Because Ancelotti goes, oh, I'll just work it out, you guys, and play where you want. But other managers who are more strict? That's a good point. Tough to see.
you've enjoyed the vlog. I just wanted to say a big thank you to everyone who supported it so far. Obviously, there are loads of people that do vlogging and obviously there are loads of people that make videos about football. For a while, I wasn't sure where I fit in. So if you do want to support it on Patreon, there is a Patreon there. And if you do want to share it, I really appreciate the sharing. What Arsenal fans have done so far, what everyone who shared it so far has done, feels great. And I really appreciate you, so thank you. It is a great day in London today. I couldn't have picked a better day for Kylian Mbappe to watch this video and go, I should move there. It is hazy, it is mild, it is beautiful. Sure, it's like Paris. So the similarity is there as well, Kylian. Think of all the beautiful places you could go to. Think of the coffee places. No. You know? That is where Mbappe would live.